everyone. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so happy to have you with us today. Today's topic is show and tell about ourselves. Not show and tell about others, but about ourselves. Feel free to drop something in the chat, say hello. We love to know who's with us today. We see some familiar names and we're glad to have our friends with us. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is show and tell about ourselves. Wonder what you will show and tell about yourself. Hmm. One more time for those people that are just joining us. This is an APH Virtual Excel Academy. Welcome. Today's topic is show and tell about ourselves. We take it a little slower today. This session is built for students with more multiple needs. And if they need someone assisting them to put something in their hands, reach something, or to participate, we want to make sure that you know it's OK. We're going to take it slow. If you can type in the chat, that's great. If you want the person that's helping you to type in the chat, they can. But it's not necessary. Our goal is to make sure that you get learning as well. Today's episode is with Melissa, sorry, Melinda Dellert. Melinda, how are you? I am doing well today. Thank you. I am going to turn this group of students over to you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And we're going to get going. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for show and tell about ourselves. I'm going to go over briefly a little bit about myself and how our lesson is going to proceed and then I'm going to share my screen with you and we will move through it. Again, my name is Melinda Dellert. I am a teacher of the visually impaired. I have been a TVI for a little over 30 years now. I've taught students everywhere from birth through 21. I've been an itinerant teacher, a classroom teacher. I've been a parent advisor and gone into the homes and I've been an administrator of children. Um, with special needs. But my most favorite always is working with my students. So I am thrilled to be here with you this afternoon. And I am actually coming to you from Huntsville, Alabama. So I am a little far south uh, today, but not too bad. It's nice and warm here. The sun's out. We've only had snow once. So I know right now everybody's kind of putting their name in the chat. And I'd like to also know, you know, kind of where are you coming from? What state or city do you live in? And where are you joining us? Zach is from Florida. Monica is from Utah. Middletown, Delaware. Donnie, I have family that's up in Connecticut, New York, not too far from Delaware. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do now is I am going to share my screen with you and we're going to talk about the lesson. So today's lesson is show and tell about ourselves. What do you think that means when you see my title, show and tell about ourselves? Does anybody want to take a guess? Okay. Let's see. So what are we learning today? Today, we're gonna to talk about self-determination. And you see my little guy here? He says, let me do it. I will tell you what I need. Because to me, self-determination means we're gonna self-advocate about ourselves. We're gonna tell people what we like, what we don't like, and what we need and what we don't need um, in order for us to get through our days and our daily activities. So that is the main topic of today. Does anybody have a way they define self-determination for themselves? You can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat. 
if you'd like to drop an answer. And I am going to break from this and just give Miss Leanne a comment. Miss Leanne, I am not seeing my chat. You know what? Hello, Miss Melinda. This is Robin. Everybody, hey, Robin, reader, and you have got some great answers coming through. We hear that some people love band. We have um, some people think that self determination is about you, like yourself. We okay, other, yes. We have other answers that say it's to tell people what I want and what I need. Those are really great answers, and you're exactly right. Those all work. And I apologize that I was not able to see your answers um, with sharing my screen. I am not sure what, what happened to my little chat box there. That's okay, Miss Melinda. Robin loves to read, so I will be your reader. You just let me know when you want to know what's going on. I appreciate it. Thank you. So again, today, what are we going to learn today? It is self-determination, but my hand's a little sensitive. We're going to talk about our self-identity. How do we identify ourselves? And this can be if we're a boy or girl, you know, what color our hair is, what color our skin is, different things like that is self-identity. And then we're also going to learn and talk about what makes us unique because it's what makes us unique that makes us so awesome. And that is a quality we want to share to everybody is our awesomeness. So we will be talking um, about what makes us unique and I will allow y'all or not allowed, but I would love for y'all to share with me what you think makes you unique. So if you want to just real quick drop in the chat and again, I'll need Robin's help, thank you. If you want to tell me something that you think is unique about yourself. All right, Miss Melinda, we have some answers coming through. We have one student that says, I play the piano and the drums. Oh, oh wow. Is that? that is An impressive. Another student says that her eyes are different and that makes her unique. Yes, it um, does. And oh, back to more music, we have another student that can sing and play and she does the clarinet. Ooh, oh my goodness. And today. Oh, we do have, you know, singing is one of those things I always wished I could do. I am not a good singer. So I really admire people that are musical and that can sing because those unfortunately are not traits that I, I have. And we have two other fun things that make our students unique. Zachary says he has a monocular. And Miranda has a prosthetic leg. Oh, wow. Those are very unique. And those are things that we will actually kind of talk about and use today on how we describe others and ourselves. So I am going to go to our next slide. So how are we going to learn today? First, we're going to talk about our favorite item. And again, if you didn't bring any items to class or anything that's perfectly okay. You can work through with us. You can just watch and work through this later. So don't worry if you don't have or didn't bring all the materials today. That's perfectly fine. The other thing I do want to say is I know we have some older students with us and this is geared a little bit toward elementary school, but if we have some middle school and high school students with us, some of these questions may be a good tool for you to use as you are transitioning uh, to a different school, to a different grade, as you are transitioning uh, to job training or a vocational program. So you can use these in different ways other than what we are using today. So this is our schedule for today. We have said our hellos. In a minute, I am gonna go over some housekeeping. 
Then we're going to begin with a little bit of warm up. We are going to talk about our favorite item. Then we will take just a five minute break. And during the break time, you can get up and stretch and move if you need to get something to eat or drink or go to the restroom. This is a great time to do it. When we come back, I'm going to go through the questions on the self assessment questionnaire that I sent out um, ahead of class. Again, if you didn't see it or you didn't get it answered, that's perfectly okay. We're going to talk about it. And after that, we'll take one more break, and that will be a five minute break. And then we will come back and we'll do the book of me. And if you don't want to use this as a book, that is okay, but there's got some good questions for just everybody to think about and good ways of figuring out how you need to communicate to others. And then after we do the book of me, it will be time for us to say goodbye. So that's the flow of our schedule today. So we have said hello, and again, hello, and thank you so much for being here with me. I'm gonna go over just some brief housekeeping of the lesson. If you need help at any time, it is perfectly okay to ask for help. I have to get help a lot in doing stuff, so I have no problem with anybody raising their hand and saying, hey, can you slow down? I need some help on this. Or could you repeat what you said? Or I don't understand what you said. That is perfectly fine. Just do whatever you need to so that we can make this lesson beneficial for you. The other thing that I do want to say in housekeeping is that I am doing this lesson from home today. And when I do Zoom meetings and stuff from home, I have three cats that insist on getting on my computer or getting on my work tray or jumping up around me. So if you hear me say shoo or get down or you see something fall or you hear something fall, it is probably my cats and I am telling them to shoo or get down. So hopefully they will not interrupt us today and I've already had one chewing on a power cord, so I have chewed him away, and I am hoping he does not come back over. So those are some of the housekeeping tips for today, and let's begin. So the first thing when I begin a lesson that I like to do is really get my hands engaged and warmed up. And I do this by massaging my hands. If you don't like to be touched or you don't like people to massage you, that's okay. You can shake your hands out. You can stretch your arms up really tall. You can stretch your arms out. You can wiggle them to the bottom. But I do start with massaging of the hands. And how I do this, I just take my hand and I push up my arm. And I do that a few times if you would like to try on yourself or if you need help with somebody else. And if you do have somebody else helping you massage or move, just please make sure you let them know before you're gonna to touch them so there is no startle. And when you push your hands up, you'll feel kind of that, your nerves kind of tingling and that blood flowing and everything's getting just energized and ready to go. So is everybody warmed up and stretched out now, and ready to go? You can type a Y for yes in the chat and I will know we can go on. Miss Melinda, we see some whys coming through from all of our students. So it looks like we are warmed up and ready to go. All right. So we're gonna talk about, I had asked everybody to kind of bring their favorite item. And Miss Leanne, do I need to, um, to go to my tray camera. Can I see? Yes, you'll need to stop sharing your screen. All right. Guys, again, bear with me. This is how I need help. I am not a technology literate person by any means. All right. So I asked y'all to bring favorite items today, and it could really be anything. And what I have brought today 
and I'm going to share mine and then I really would love to hear what y'all have brought. And I apologize for the glare. I'm not quite sure where that is coming from. I am not a fan of glare, so I do do apologize for that. But I brought a bracelet. And this is a silver bracelet. It is a bracelet my daughter got me about seven years ago for my birthday. And it has charms on it. One of my favorite charms, it says mom on it. And, but I wear this bracelet every day um, that I am out because it is just my one of my most favorite things. So what did y'all bring today for your favorite item? All right, Miss Melinda, we see some answers coming through. We oh. have a student who brought an iPad. We have a student who has a music note bracelet cool. and another student who brought drumsticks. Oh, wow. So we have an interesting um, assortment of favorite things that people brought today. And I brought my favorite set of headphones. They have big cushion over the ear <laughs> ones and they are so comfy. Another student has brought a magnet. I see that. Um, oh, another a transformer. One has, oh, a transformer. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Melinda. I forgot you can see the screen and I'm just reading it all to you. No, so, that's okay. I can see it now. I can't, couldn't see it when I shared the screen. I couldn't see my chat. Wow. And Miranda has a stuffed chipmunk. We just have some really cool things that people brought to class today. A Mickey Mouse. Josh, my husband is a huge Mickey Mouse fan. When we got married, I had to get Mickey Mouse sheets and pillowcases and blankets because he is just a huge Mickey Mouse fan. So pretty cool that you brought that to class today. So what I'd like to ask you to do is what makes this item your favorite? Does it remind you of a favorite place? Or does it remind you of a favorite activity? A favorite time of day? Or do you just like the way the object feels and looks? What makes this favorite to you? So for me, and I'll let y'all put that in the chat, but for me, this is my favorite because it actually reminds me of a memory. Let me see if y'all can see my card, my memory card. Oh, not too well. I apologize for that. Oh, that's upside down. But we can see it a little bit better. So my favorite item reminds me of a memory. And it reminds me of the memory of my daughter and when she was younger. Wow, okay. So this reminds me of my favorite band teacher. That's really cool, Nikki, that you have a favorite, a favorite teacher and you have something that reminds you. One helps you calm down. I actually believe I have that on here to calm down. That is one of my sensory things too. My favorite items sometimes help me calm, calm down. And I see Donnie has said, it's just your favorite activity. So that's pretty cool too, that we have all of these things that make our items our favorite. So items actually can be described at both as an emotional response. Let me turn that around. and as a sensory response. So when I say an item can be described, our favorite item can be described as a sensory response, what do I mean by our senses? What would we be using to describe our object? Touch, yes. Touch is one thing, way we can use to describe it. Anybody else have a sense that they use? Smelling, touch, hearing, and seeing? Yes, all of those, those are great. 
what other senses do y'all use to describe or your favorite items? Okay. So that's our senses that we can use to describe. And y'all did an awesome job to see and taste. Absolutely. So now we can describe our favorite object using emotional, emotional senses or how it makes us feel. So what are some emotions? We talked a little bit when I said, mine reminds me of a memory. What are some emotional responses that your favorite item makes you or you think of? Happy and sad? So kind of both, just depending, I guess, on how we're using it. Happy and joyful. Oh, the bracelets make you very happy. I like to jingle and shine too. So I like wearing bracelets. Happy songs. Yes, songs can definitely make you feel good and get you excited and make you feel happy. Y'all are doing an awesome job answering these questions. Gosh, I am so glad to see all these responses. Anybody else want to contribute an answer? I think we've got some very good ones. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now, we've talked about emotional response. We've talked about the sensory response for our items. And I'd like you to Pick your item up and put it in your hand if you can, or you can just look at it and touch and feel. And when you touch it, what is one word that kind of describes, if you had to use one word to describe how that item is, and you were telling me, what one word would you use? Hard. Yes, an iPad is hard. Smooth. Nadia has said smooth. Easy to wear. That is a good one. Ease is important and easy to wear. When I feel mine, mine is made kind of, it's made of silver, which Ms. is a matter. Ms. Yes. Ms. Robin, you cut out for a hot second there at the beginning. Could you just restart with your description about your bracelet, your first part cut out? I sure can. Um, my bracelet is made of silver. So it's silver, it's a metal. And so when I put my hands on it, my bracelet is very, very cold. It stays cold because for whatever reason, the metal in it stays cold. So that's, that's how I would describe mine. But at the same time, it is also smooth. It is a smooth band and there's no rough bumps or anything on it. Oh, Mary Frances, soft and nifty. I like the word nifty. We've got, got quite a few responses. Okay, so my next question to you with your favorite item, and gosh, y'all, we are on a roll, and I am so thrilled with how y'all are answering these. I want you to come up with three words that you could use to describe your favorite object to somebody who wasn't there to see it or to touch it. So for instance, for mine, I could say it's smooth, it's round, and it is shiny. So what are three words that maybe you could use to describe it to somebody who's never seen it before.
round, smooth, and jingly. Yes. Hard, big, and square. Very good. Long, fat, and heavy. We've got some good answers coming through here. Anybody else like to contribute an answer? I like some of the adjectives y'all are using. These are just, these are great responses. So I am gonna go back to sharing my screen right now. And we've talked about our favorite item and why it's favorite to us, all of us, what I think is makes us so unique, unique. Almost everybody brought something completely different that was important and special to them and had different reasons for it. And that's one of the things that makes us so unique and unique when we talk and share about ourselves to others. So we actually have come to our first five minute break. So if you would like to get up, move around, stretch, go get something to eat or drink, please do so at this time. And we will be back in five minutes. And Ms. Robin on this part, comments, I'm not sure. Oops, sorry, you froze there, Ms. Melinda. Can you please repeat that? Yes, um, when I went back to sharing my screen, my chat disappeared. So I didn't know if there were any remarks or comments about going into our five minute break. Nope, nope. So our younger students can enjoy a break any way they'd like. You could play yes. some music. Our older students can start to think about where we should know these things, work um, maybe with a new teacher and how you could apply these skills. See you in a few minutes.
All right, everybody. We are done with our five minute break. So to get going again, let's do some quick just stretches and some quick movements. Again, if you want to massage your hands, you can. To wake them up, you can stretch your arms high in the air if you don't like massaging. You can stretch them out. You can stretch them down and shake them and get our bodies woken back up. So what we're gonna talk about next is what I call a self-assessment questionnaire. And I have sent this out ahead of class. Again, it's perfectly okay. If you did not get it done or if you didn't print it out, that's okay. Cause I'm gonna go through some of the questions with you for this. And we're gonna talk a little bit about them. And so Ms. Robin, again, I am sharing my screen. So would you mind helping me out with the chat room again, please for answers? Absolutely, I am here whenever you need me and when I see those answers. All right, so the self-assessment questionnaire is one of those things I want y'all to just kind of keep some of these questions in the back of your head when people are wanting to know about you or when you're wanting to communicate something about yourself. The first question I have is, what are some things that you can do easily right now without any assistance? So what's something you can do easily without assistance? So for example, one of the things that I can do easily now without assistance is I can eat and cook without anybody's help. So I can do that right now. That's one task I can do independently. Another task that I can do independently right now are my grooming. I can wash my hair. I can fix my hair by myself. What are some things you can do easily right now with minimal assistance? All right, Ms. Melinda, we have some answers. Okay, great. One student says, I can go to a Word document and open Word. Oh, wow, that is good. As you can see from today, that's great because I'm not very technology savvy. So I applaud you for already being able to do all of that. Another student, another student says that they can use their cell phone. An, another right. student says, I can open lots of containers. Oh and my goodness, that is good. One of our students has her hand up. Hello, Isabel, good to see you. Il Isabel, I'm gonna, you have permission to talk. Zoom webinar, lower hand button. I can open the refrigerator pretty easily. That's really good. Thank you for raising your hand and sharing that. I like hearing when we have students that want to talk. So thank you very much. And then another student in the chat says that they can make a sandwich. Another says load the dishwasher. Oh, wow. I bet that is a huge help to your family. And some more answers. Uh, one student says they can get on Facebook independently, <laughs> while another says use my Braille notes. That's really good. Uh, those are awesome answers. And I get what I think is so fun to hear and to see what y'all putting. Everybody has different answers. And again, that goes back to our uniqueness, which makes us all different. But it also, because we're different, we do need to learn to share these with others. And we need to learn to be able to describe ourselves to others so that the teacher or the person that we're working for doesn't think we're all the same because y'all are very unique. And I just think this is awesome some of the answers you have given me. So the next question I have is, what do I need the most help with right now? I put communicating, I probably should have put technology on there, but communicating kind of through the computer is where I need my greatest help. We have some answers coming in. One student says they need help with 
ONM or orientation and mobility. Mm -hmm. Other students share that they need help with their iPad and technology, paying bills. And one student says, I need the most help with going to Google Chrome. And yep. an another student says, I need help putting on my orthotics. That is tough. And when I have to put orthotics on some of my students, sometimes it takes both me and my paraprofessional to make sure we get it just right. So again, awesome answers. Everyone shared something different. And again, our uniqueness. What do you actually right now, my next question is, enjoy doing the most? Can you please repeat your question, Ms. Melinda? Yes. What do you enjoy doing the most right now? What is your most fun activity? Okay, we have some answers coming in. Our first student says they enjoy staying in the dorms, while other students say they enjoy work. Someone says enjoying listening to music. And I love this answer from our friend, Donnie. He says, Zoom meetings with APH. And we enjoy having <laughs> you too, Donnie. We look forward Thanks. to seeing you. Other yes. students say walking, school. One student says, I enjoy the drums because they make me feel calm and help me make me feel joyful. Ah, oh, very good. And our last student shares that they enjoy playing the Bebot. I think that that might be a game that they like playing. I am not familiar with it, but it's a, if it is a game. But again, listen to all the different answers we're getting. I mean, I just, I just think that is so awesome that everybody is bringing something of themselves to this that is just so unique. So I'm gonna ask you two next questions. And the first one is, this is how others kind of perceive you or think about you. So other people like it when I do what? What are things that other people like when you do it? We have some answers coming through. Our first oh, right. one says, give out answers in class. So that's fun yeah. when the answers come out. Yes, well, it is. Other students say, helping others. Another student says, tell jokes. Oh, I love oh, that one. Course. Jokes are always fun. Yes, another, they are. I love them. Another student says, when I clean my room. And another says, other people like it when I'm safe, respectful, and nice. That Donnie is cares important. when I don't put inappropriate stuff on Facebook. That's important. And the last comment is they like it when they open the door. That is very polite. Yes. And um, we had some good ones there being respectful. Everybody likes to be treated with respect. We did get some good ones from Donnie about what should be appropriate and not appropriate to put on Facebook because that kind of gets into our own safety as well. So those are all really good answers. Now, my next question is, others do not like it when I do this. What is something others do not like when you do it? Okay, our answers are coming through. One student says not liking cussing. That's not a good one. Or no. being rude. Or when I don't charge my technology. Uh, others, and then, yep. oops, sorry. Others share 
you have many answers coming through, Miss Melinda. Cool. Other students say, when I don't focus in class. Another student says, others don't like it when I'm rude and disrespectful. And our last student shares, when I refuse to walk. Those are great answers. And yes, having being prepared for class, having our technology charged. Again, sometimes, sometimes we are having a bad day and we can be rude, but it's, it's always good to be respectful. Those are great, great answers. So my next question, and we're getting, again, talking about yourself. How would you describe your personality? Would you say you're happy, energetic, quiet? I'm a little too serious sometimes and I get stressed out. And then sometimes that makes me fumble. What about y'all? Okay, here come our answers. Our first one is happy and funny. Ah, uh, those are good. Yes, while other students say full of energy, happy, a giggle box, <laughs> funny. Another student says, my personality is happy, joyful, and nice. While another student says, grumpy sometimes. And our last student says, I'm also quiet. I tell you, Miss Robin, we have got quite the class today. And I how agree. everybody that describes themselves as happy and funny and telling jokes. And I tell you, I am glad to be here with y'all. This is, this is an awesome class. My last two questions kind of go hand in hand to make you think about yourself. It is, what do you like least or what would you like to change about yourself? For instance, I would like to spend more time learning technology. Um, I'd like to be able to like make eye contact better. I'm really bad when I'm in public about making eye contact. So that's something I'd like to do better. We have our answers coming in. Our first student says that they would like to be able to see. Another student says, I would like to do better in school. Another says, I like least is when I'm sad and rude. And Donnie says, not to stay on Zoom 24 <laughs> seven, good idea. And our last answer, oh, we have a couple more, but our next answer is I would like to be less disrespectful and rude. And another answer is I would be able to play in a marching band. Uh, is that from our drum player or our clarinet player that would love to be in the marching band? Would you please let us know? Are you, who's our marching player, our marching band person? Are you the clarinet or are you the drums? We'll wait for that answer. Oh, clarinet that's what i thought that is a that is a cool thing to do all right the one last thing we're going to do and then we'll take one more break before our final activity is i have a mirror that i'm going to put down of course this is going to get all a lot of glare and i am going to actually right now stop sharing my computer And if we could, I don't know if you can see my mirror, but what I'd like you to do if you have a mirror, if you don't, is just kind of look in the mirror and look at yourself. And what do you see or how do you perceive yourself? So when I look in the mirror, I see somebody who who has been teaching a long time. I have on glasses. I'm a little quiet and a little shy. What do you see?
Oh, I have short hair. Anybody else would they like to put an answer? Uh, I'm someone who has a cane and short hair. And I am blind. Thank you, Mary Ferris, for sharing that. And those are important things to know. If you travel with a cane, that is an important um, skill that somebody needs to know, visually impaired. Again, y'all really have a good grasp on who you are and what your capabilities are. This is awesome. Anybody else like to do before we go into our next break? All right, I am gonna go to sharing my screen again. And we are gonna go into our second five minute break. When we come back, we will begin our last activity and it is an activity we probably won't finish in class, but you will be able to carry it over to working on after class. All right, I will see y'all in about five minutes. Hello students, I have some music for you. So while you are on your break, you can practice some mindfulness. So enjoy the music. Miss Melinda, we are ready to go when you are ready now, so we have time to finish. All right. So our last activity, and I'm going to, is our book of me. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see me from my work tray and what I will be working on. So this is the book of me that, again, I sent out. Let's see. Are we seeing, uh, Miss Leanne, are we seeing my work tray or me? Uh, both. Okay. And I will highlight the work tray only now. Thank you. All right. So the book of me, and this is something, again, may seem a little bit like it's for elementary kids, but it, again, it's a tool to get you thinking about yourself. It's a tool to get you in the mindset of how am I going to communicate to other people my uniqueness, 
and the things I need and the things I don't need because we don't want people doing stuff for us that we are perfectly capable of doing ourselves. Sometimes we can get a little bit lazy, but we need to do as much as possible. And we need to communicate this. So I have done this through the book of me for today. Again, you can modify this any way you want. If you're going, if you're a middle schooler going into high school, you could, you know, just call this your transition journal or your transition book and put stuff in it that you want the high school teachers to know about you coming from middle school because our personalities and our likes and dislikes change as we get older. And if you're in high school, you could call this your, again, your vocational journal, your vocational checklist of things that people need to know about you as you move forward in your independent living. So these are just some different ways to think about it. But today I've chosen the book of me. And so you will see, I have a picture of me that I am going to glue down. And if you brought a picture of yourself, that's great. If you want to draw a picture of yourself with crayons, if you want to have somebody else do it, that's fine. Or if you just want to work on this later, since we are not actually going to be able to finish it all the way through, that is fine too. So that's kind of how I'm going to begin. And then our next page on the book of me, it says, when I look in the mirror, I see. And we've already talked about what we see. I see a girl. I'm a little bit older than a girl, but I picked girl because that's the gender. And so I could put that in my book. I could also put teacher. I could put mother on that. Our next page is, and y'all have done such an awesome job already ask, answering these questions. I like this the most about me. So I did put my eyes. My eyes are green and I just have always liked my eyes. I also like my hair because I can change colors of my hair. I can make it yellow. I can make it brown. I can make it red. It's fun to play with. What are some things that you like most about yourself that you would include on this page? Okay. So I will keep moving forward. The next one, again, a question. I like, uh, I like my ways that I talk to people. I would include my drums. Those are great answers. We've already answered our next page would be, and I apologize guys, I'm gonna go through this a little bit quick just so you can see this. And again, this is something you can work on after class or with your teacher or parent or friend and adapt it any way you want. But I know a lot of us have already answered the question. I wish I could. My next page is, I wish others would let me do this without trying to help. And this is important and it's important that we know what we're independent in, but we also know how to politely communicate, hey, I can do this. And so the things that I've put on here that I wish others would let me do without trying to help is crossing the street and walking. So my husband always tries to help me. I have a bad knee and sometimes I fall, and but I like doing it by myself. So that's something to think about, a ways that things you can do, but others need to let you do it independently. The last question is, I need to ask help when I do this. And asking for help is just as important as being able to do something independently. 
Ah, Nadia, thank you. I says, I like my way, so I talk to people. I wish I could put my clarinet read in without help. That is, those clarinet reads, I have seen students use those, and that is kind of difficult to do. What is something you need help when doing this? I need to learn to ask for help. One of the things I need to learn to ask for help on is ordering food. I forget to take my reading glasses and then I cannot see the menu at all. And I truly can't see it. So I have to find somebody um, to read it for me. So what is something that you need to learn to ask for help? And my last two questions, and we're probably gonna stop on this question, is what is one thing I would like to learn this year? What is something new I would like to learn this year? If y'all want to. Uh, need to ask help in math. That is, that is true. I know a lot of people need to help in math. Thank you, Nadia. Anybody like to just share before we close out what's one thing they'd like to learn this year? Ah, oh, use an Instant Pot. Mary Ferris, I don't know how to use an Instant Pot either, so that would be a good goal for me. Fun stuff in science. Uh, troubleshoot other technology. That definitely needs to be a goal for me as well, Mary Chris. How to do more marching. Nydia, I have a high school right behind me and during the summers, I see them out practicing marching all the time. and to learn more about Google Chrome and that you want to use it. Yep, I tell you, some of y'all are right there with me on learning that technology. Well, I'm gonna close it out today and say goodbye. I want to thank y'all. Y'all have been a great, great class participating. And I hope some of the tools that you've learned today, some of the questions that I've asked you to think about in regards to yourself has gotten you a little bit curious about, hey, how do I see myself and how do others see me? And how, more importantly, how can I communicate and advocate what makes me unique and what I need others to do for me and what I need them to let me do for myself? So and I am going to end you because we are okay. over time. So thank you, Melinda, so much. If you, you are going to join us next week, next week we are on Tuesday talking about developing social skills that promote positive interactions with others. On Wednesday, we're going to make a Valentine's Day pop-up card. And on Thursday, we are playing with patterns. And since we're over time, I'm going to let you all go and say thank you to my captioner. Thank you. Bye, all. I'm going to give one moment for my captioner to send the file because I know she needs to. Okay. All set. Have a good. great day. Have a good weekend, mm -hmm. too.